Welcome back. So I did a video on AdCore on June 26th. So at that time it was selling for about $83 a share and my price target was uh, $127 on average. The highest one I had was 140. And then whenever I put my margin of safety on it, I had the buy price around 83. So since then it's actually climbed higher than my highest price target. So it's climbed all the way. It went as high recently. Let me make this a recent uh, chart. It went as high as 153. Uh, but now it's back down to 144. So I think once it crossed 150, you had some profit taking. So what I wanted to do in this video is look at the financials, look at the updated guidance and see if we think it's time to sell the stock, lock in those gains, okay? All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna touch on, uh, in case you didn't know, the way I found this was a magic formula stocks. So let me pull up the magic formula. So if you want a full deep dive on what the magic formula is, I actually cover it on the AtCore original video. Uh, but I'll just say basically, Joel Greenblatt, who has had a great return and has great books on investing, he ranks all the stocks in the, all the listed companies by this magic formula and then publishes the, this list every day. And AtCor was on this list, but it has dropped off. But actually, if you look at the top 50 stocks, um, it's still here. So basically what he's saying is, look, it's not one of the top 30 anymore, but according to this magic formula, it's, you know, number 30 through 50, one of those, or number 31 through 50, I should say. Okay, so that's that. Let's review the financials. Okay, so we have the income statement first, and this is every quarterly report going back to about 2015, December 2015. And what you can see right off the bat is that the quarterly report, the most recent one, which just was uh, re released in this week and caused the stock to jump, is actually a lower revenue than, than the previous quarter and is actually lower year over year as well. We're definitely gonna get into the details of why the stock responded the way it did even with, with all these uh, downtrends that, that you're about to see. But all right, so that's the revenue. Real quick, we're also gonna look at um, the pre-tax income because as y'all know, this is a great rule of thumb that I use for valuation. Basically, I take what I think the pre-tax income is going to be multiply that by 10 and that's just kind of like a rough estimate for what fair value of the stock is okay so uh in in that video in the ad core video i had i had accounted for i think a drop off around to the 150 million dollars a quarter range and then if you multiply that by four so 150 times four is 600 right um yeah 600 so i'd said about a six billion dollar market cap and at that time it was about 140 dollars a share but since then they've they've bought back more stocks so 600 uh a six billion dollar market cap is actually going to be a higher stock price now okay so how accurate was my prediction or was that a little bit too conservative and uh, the answer is actually going to come from their guidance okay so one of the reasons actually i think it's the main reason that the stock jumped like it did is that uh well re really two things they set a 2025 goal that we're going to talk about for earnings but also they updated their 2023 uh, adjusted EBITDA target, or not target, their outlook, their adjusted EBITDA outlook. So y'all know I hate EBITDA and I hate adjusted EBITDA even more than that, but uh, what I'm going to do is kind of reconcile that to pre-tax income. So I'll just show you how to do that real quick. So here's that outlook I was just talking about, full year adjusted EBITDA outlook increase to, let's just call it a billion dollars, right? Split the difference here. All right, so going down here, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom where it says reconciliation of uh, net income to to EBITDA. Where is it? Okay, right here. Adjusted EBITDA. All right, what is net income? Here's adjusted EBITDA. So re remember, I'm trying to get to pre-tax income as a percentage of EBITDA. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, so pre-tax income is going to be net income plus the taxes. So I'm going to say 174 plus 48. Okay, and then 222 divided by 264. And you can see that's about 84%. So uh, a good rule of thumb is that whatever number they say for adjusted EBITDA, 84% of that is you know going to be the pre-tax income. Okay, so going back to the chart here, if they said that the adjusted EBITDA is projected to be a billion dollars, what's 84% of a billion? Right, it's um, it's it's 840 million. Right, I really don't need to do that math, but I'll do it anyway. Right. 0.84 times a thousand millions is 840 million okay so that number divided by four gives me my per quarter number and it's actually going to look like it's going to level off you know around this 200 million dollars uh 
per quarter, right? Whereas I was assuming 150. So let's just say that it's going to be 200, so eight 800 million dollars uh, even for, for the year. Basically, what that means is that you know my new market cap assumption is going to be eight billion dollars. We're going to get to that later on in the valuation, right? Okay, let's go through some other stuff. Earnings per share. This one's going to be interesting too because actually what they did was they updated their guidance. And this is trailing 12 months. So this is going to be a full year value here. Um, so they've updated their guidance that they expect to have earnings per share of $18 or higher by 2025. I think it was 18 But anyway, I think what that did was a lot of people were worried that the stock was going to come down here and have a reversion to the mean and just kind of like, you know, get back online like that, which is very far from $18. So what they're saying is actually what's going on is that they might drop a little bit, but then it's going to come back up to this $18. And that's a huge difference, I think, from what the market was factoring in and then what management just said. I think that was one quarter ago. But they reiterated this quarter, and they actually got a question about it. Some, you know, one, one of the investment analysts said something along the lines of, like, are y'all about to raise it again? Because I think it was obvious that they were blowing it out the water. I think that they were conservative with that $18 a share by 2025. So it could be even higher, you know that they might not get below 20 again but you know let's not let's not factor that okay anyway that is uh the earnings real quick i'm just going to look at the debt because i think that this is important and i'm not looking at debt as much as i'm going to be looking at uh debt to equity ratio and really what i'm just trying to point out here is what path they're on you know they're they're reducing this debt to equity ratio they're about to be under one i mean you can see here the the most recent quarter was 1.02 so really really good good sign there that means you're either shrinking debt or raising equity uh they're they're raising equity in this case i think that they're comfortable with the amount of debt they have it's not that much uh, so anyway that's that and then the last thing we're gonna go to is the cash flow statement and with the cash flow statement there's two things i'm looking at i'm looking at stock buybacks and i'm looking at uh free cash flow conversion okay so stock buybacks they're just consistently buying back shares so that is awesome i mean look at this that last what is this five quarters they've bought back let me sum these if i sum these the last five quarters has been 600 million dollars okay so they've bought back more than 10 percent of the market cap the current market cap um at you know in the last five quarters so think about how what percentage that was back whenever the market cap was four billion dollars it was much bigger okay anyway that's awesome love seeing share buybacks and then the last thing like i said is free cash flow conversion because y'all know one thing that makes me uneasy is uh to see a company where like they're making a bunch of money on paper like income wise but then the cash just isn't there for some reason and you know there's various ways they can do it uh, but it just really kind of concerns me. So just looking at this, uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, over 100 is kind of an anomaly. You're really not going to see that many companies that are consistently over 100. I'm kind of looking for above, I don't know, 70, 80%. And it's less so that I'm looking for that as much as this number is going to affect my valuation from a cash flow perspective, right? And we're about to get into that, okay? All right, so let's go to that. Let's go to valuation. Okay, so this is actually last valuation. So this is the valuation I did seven months ago for the pre-tax income rule of thumb. I had $140 a share for the free cash or for the DCF, the discounted cash flow. I had $107 a share. Okay, so what happens now? Okay, I said that the pre-tax income now is going to be $8 billion. So if I do $8 billion and I ratio that to the current market cap, so divided by 6.1 times 144 so i get a price target here of 189 dollars a share all right and then the dcf um basically what i'm going to do and i should have gotten this number but before i got to go get a free cash flow number for the year so i'm actually going to hop back to the cash flow statement real quick and i'm going to pull up the trailing 12 months free cash flow okay get it out of percentages bear with me okay all right, so what do I think this is going to go to? Um, I, what did I have last time? I had, what, 320? So this time, I mean, they're, 
they're really sending signals that they're not going to drop off like people were fearing, right? But I'm not going to project them to be much higher, you know, just perpetually growing. I think that would be kind of naive. So let's say 500 million. That would be around this line, right? Okay. So anyway, let's go back to valuation with that $500 million value. And okay, so if I put $500 million of free cash flow a year, I'm going to keep growth the same, uh, discount at 15%. Real quick, I think somebody made a comment last video that 7% perpetual growth rate is like really too high. And it is high, but it's not as big a factor whenever you're discounting at 15%, right? And to be fair, uh, they the company compounded at like 10, 11% before this uh, COVID boom happened anyways. So I, I think that it's going to be more like 10 or 11% for, for at least the, the next few years, but that's getting ahead of myself. Okay, so net present value, 7.2 billion. So I'm going to do the same thing. 7.2 divided by 6.1. 6.1 is the current market cap of the stock. Okay, and then I multiply that by the current share price, and that makes uh, the price target $170 here. Okay, so now my average price target jumped from 127 to 180. So obviously we're still not there, which is good, but you may be thinking, man, why did you go from having conservative assumptions to all of a sudden being more liberal with, with your assumptions? And the reason is, one, the updated guidance. I don't think it's all that uh, crazy, to th these assumptions now. But two, anytime I'm thinking about selling a stock, especially one that I'm sitting on a huge gain on, uh, one thing I always try to ask myself is like, if I do a generous valuation, make sure that it's not undervalued there. Monish Pabrai actually has a really good quote about this. He says, value investors were actually really good at finding the value floor of something, like what the baseline is, but we're really terrible at predicting the value ceiling. And the best thing is just to hold on, right? And that's kind of the Phil Fisher quote up top as well. You know, if you find the right company, the best time to sell is never. Um... That being said, okay, my new price target's 180. What is my price to buy more, right? Let's say it keeps on dropping from this 150. Let's say people continue to take profits. What's my new price to uh, to buy? Like I did last time, I'm gonna be consistent. 180 times 0.67, margin of safety, 121. 121 will be the price where I'm really thinking about, hey, do I wanna add to my position? I really hate averaging up on my cost basis, but you never know, right? That's all I got. I hope you enjoy the video. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.